Ted Reynolds is one lucky guy. His job for so many years is to comment on great sporting events around the world for the CBC. With passion and admirable warmth, he's described for all of us the Olympics in Tokyo, Munich, Montreal, Los Angeles, and in less than 48 hours, will describe the opening ceremonies at the 88 Winter Games in Calgary. His specialty sports have been figure skating and swimming, two of Canada's best events. Please meet the man with a smile as big as the West, Ted Reynolds. Where's your hometown? Where were you? I was born in Grand Forks, B.C. And your parents wanted you to be a... I have the foggiest <laughs> idea what they wanted me to be, frankly. Uh, they were always a little shocked at whatever I was, but... My mother did say at one time, uh, she said, you better get something where you have to talk for a living. So, because? I guess I was sort of verbose at the time. Was Kamloops the first radio job? Mm-hmm. CFJC in Kamloops. When did you first come to the CBC and what brought you here? Was it? Well, I started doing work for the CBC while I was at, still at CJBI in Victoria. Uh, Bill Herbert, who, uh, you know, was one of my mentors, one of the great old outside broadcasters of the CBC's history, used to come over to Victoria all the time to do things. Uh, this is before the days of legislative reporters and things like that. So if there was anything going on over there, I would be doing it anyway. For instance, when, when the CPR built new ferries, the Princess Marguerite and the Patricia, for instance, when they came around in 1948, uh, we'd go out into the Straits and meet them, and I'd do the report for Bill. But I came over here originally to, when the Mounties were invented, the baseball team, yes. to broadcast the baseball games, and that was in the spring of 56. Now, where does Ripple Rock fit in all of Ripple this? Ripple Rock fits in in, 50, in the spring of 58, which is just... 30 years ago. It was just another ball game. Yeah, and it was a massive thing. And this was the biggest, the widest remote ever done in North America at that time. We had people listening to us in Tucson, Arizona, and all over the place. There was so much to say yeah. leading up to the moment. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing went, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we were behind a bunker that would have stopped half an atom bomb with helmets on and the whole ball of wax. Expect We didn't know what we thought. It may go up 100 feet. It may go up 200. Who knows? And there was sort of a little burp in the middle of the straight, and that was it. You said uh, recently that, that Los Angeles, the Olympic Games, was the most exciting because... Because it's the first time after all these years I got to describe a swimming gold medal, really. And it started right off on the first day with Alex Bauman. And it had been quite a while, like 1912, when George Hodgson won Canada's other Olympic swimming gold medals. So that was a very, very emotional moment for all of us. After all those Olympic swimming races that I had described, to finally see someone win a gold medal for Canada. Uh, uh, do you find yourself in those situations keeping yourself in check, or do you just let your emotions go? You get the same I don't because... keep in check at all, and I get criticized, particularly by people in the written media who don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> they don't understand, I think, uh, the difference between what I do and what they do. I am describing something that's extremely emotional as it's happening. Yes. I'm not taking notes and then going back to an office or my hotel room or something and sitting down and writing a piece and editing it and proofreading it and all that stuff and being ultra clinical and this type of thing. I'm emoting and I'm describing it as it happens and we're as different as chalk and cheese. It doesn't bother me that they don't understand but it does annoy me a little bit at times. When do you want to retire? I don't want to retire. I have no intention whatsoever. I may change my status because of uh, the staff situation and all that, but I have no intention in the world of retiring. What would I do? I've never done anything else, Terry, for 43 years, so. You've been one lucky son of a gun. Oh, I admit it. I've got the best job in the world, and I don't deny it for a minute. And you're not about to give it up? No way. Daryl Duke has proven himself to be a director respected around the world. 